And David had passed on a little from the top, and behold, Ziba Mephibosheth's young man came to meet him, and a team of asses saddled, and on them two hundred loaves and a hundred bunches raisins of, and a hundred A bunch of raisins and a hundred of summer fruit and a skin of wine. And said the king to Ziba, What are these to you? And said Ziba, The asses are for the house of the king to ride one, and the bread and the summer fruit for to eat the young men and the wine for to drink the wearied in the wilderness. And said the king, And where is the son of your lord? And said Ziba to the king, Behold, he is staying in Jerusalem. For he said, Today shall give back to me the house of Israel, the kingdom of my father. And said the king to Ziba, Behold, to you all that is to Mep Hibosheth and said Ziba, I bow myself, may I find favor in your eyes. O my lord the king, and came the king David to Bahurim, and to from there a man was coming out of the family of the house of Saul, and his name was Shimei, the son of Jera. He came out as he came in causing and cursing, and he stoned with stones David and all the servants of King David, and all the people and all the mighty men on his right and on his left. And thus said Shimei in his cursing, Go out, go out, O man of blood, O man of worthlessness, has returned on you, Jehovah, all the blood of the house of Saul, of whom you have reigned instead of him, and shall give Jehovah the kingdom into the hand of Absalom, your son, and behold you in your evil, for a man of blood you are. And said Abishai, the son of Zariah, to the king, Why should curse this dead dog, my lord, the king? Let me go over, I beg you, and I will take off his head. And said the king, What is to me and to you, sons of Zariah? For let him curse even, because Jehovah has said to him, Curse David. And who shall say, Why have you done so? And said David to Abishai and to all his servants, See, my son who came out of my loins is seeking my life, and also surely now the Benjamite Leave him alone and let him curse, for has spoken to him, Jehovah perhaps will look this. And went David with his men in the highway, and Shemai was going along at the side of the hill across from him. As he went, he cursed and stoned with stones across from him and dusted with dust. And came the king and all the people who were with him wearied, and he was refreshed there. And Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, had come into Jerusalem. And Ahithophai with him, and it was men had come, Hushai the archite, David's friend to Absalom, that said Hushai to Absalom, Let live the king, let live the king, and said Absalom to Hushai, 
Is this your kindness with your friend? Why not have you gone with your friend? And said Hushai to Absalom, No, for he who whom has chosen Jehovah and people this, even all the men of Israel, for him I shall be, and with him I shall remain. No, for he who no, for he whom has chosen Jehovah and this people, even all the men of Israel, for him I shall be, and with him I shall remain, and a second time whom I should serve. Should I not be before his son as I served before your father, so shall I be before you, and said Absalom to Ahithophi. Give your counsel what we shall do, and said Ahithophel, Ahithophi, though fell to Absalom, go into the concubines of your father, whom he left to keep the house, and shall hear all Israel that you have become odious with your father and will be strong in the hands of all who are with you. And they pitched for Absalom a tent on the roof, and went in Absalom to the concubines of his father before the sons of all Israel, and the council of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was as one who had inquired at the word of God so was all the counsel of Ahithophel, both to David and to Absalom. And said Ahithophel to Absalom, Let me choose, please, twelve thousand men, and I shall arise and pursue after David tonight, and shall come upon him, and he shall be weary and feeble of hands, and I will make tremble him, and shall flee all the people who are with him. And I shall smite the king by himself, and I shall bring back all the people to you when we turn all except the man whom you are seeking. All the people shall be in peace. And was pleasing the thing in the eyes of Absalom and in the eyes of all the elders of Israel. And said, Absalom, please call also for Hershai the archite. And we shall hear what is in his mouth, even he. And in came Hushai to Absalom, and spoke Absalom to him, saying, According to word this has spoken, Ahithophel, shall we do his word? If not, you speak. And said, Hushai. Hushai to Absalom, not as good the counsel that has counseled Ahithophel at this time, and said, Hushai, you have known your father and his men, that mighty men they are, and bitter of soul they are, like a bear bereaved of cubs in the field, and your father is a man of war, and not shall lodge with the people. Behold, now he is hidden in one of the pits, or in one of the places, and it shall be at the falling among them at the beginning that shall hear whoever hears, and shall say, 
there. There has been a slaughter among the people who follow Absalom, and he also the son of Valor, of whom his heart as the heart of the lion utterly shall melt, for knows all Israel that is mighty a man, your father, and sons of valor, those which are with him. So I counsel that diligently let be gathered to you all Israel from Dan, even to Beersheba as the sand that is by the sea for multitude and you yourself shall go into battle and we shall come to him in one of the places where he shall be found there and we shall fall on him as falls the dew on the ground and not shall be left of him even of all the men who are with him even one and if into a city he is taken then shall bear all israel to that city ropes and we shall draw it into the tory into the torrent valley until not shall be found there even a pebble and said Absalom and all the men of Israel is better the counsel of Hushai the archite than the counsel of Ahithophel and Jehovah commanded to break down the counsel of Ahithophel good for the sake of bringing Jehovah to bringing Jehovah's to Absalom evil and said Hushai to Zedek and to Abiathar the priests like this and he like this counseled Ahithophel Absalom and the elders of Israel and like this and like this have counseled I and now send quickly and tell David saying not do stay the night at the fords of the wilderness and also be sure to pass over lest there be a swallowing of the king and all the people who are with him and jonathan and ahimaaz were standing at enrogai and went a slave girl and told them and they went and told it to king david for not they were able to be seen going into the city and saw them a youth and told Absalom and they went on both of them in haste and came into the house of a man in Bahurim and to him was a well in his court and they went down there and took the woman and spread the covering over the mouth of the well and spread on it grain and not was known the thing and came in the servants of Absalom to the woman to the house and said where are Ahimaaz and Jonathan and said to them the woman they crossed the river of water and they sought but not did find and returned to Jerusalem and it was after they had left that they came up out of the well and went and told King David and said David and said to David, Rise up and cross quickly the waters, for thus has counseled against you a high thofal. And rose up David and all the people who were with him, and they crossed the Jordan until the light of the morning. And they crossed the Jordan until the light of the morning, until one not there was lacking who 
had crossed the Jordan in a high thofel, saw that naught was done his counsel, and he saddled the ass and rose up and went to his house, to his city, and gave command to his household and hanged himself and died, and he was buried in his father's grave. And David came to Mahanaim, and Absalom crossed the Jordan, he and all the men of Israel with him, and Amasa and sat, had sat Absalom instead of Joab over the army, and Amasa Am Asa and Am Asa was the son of Amman and his name Ithra the Israelite who had gone into Abigail the daughter of Nahash the sister of Zariah the mother of Joab and camped Israel and Ab Salon in the land of Gilead. And it was when came into David Mahanaim the Shobai, the son of Nahash from Rabbah of the sons of Ammon, and Mashur the son of Amiel from Lodebar. Bar Silai the Gileadite from Rogilim beds and basins and vessels earthen and wheat and barley and flour and parched and beans and lentils and parched grain and honey and curds and sheep and cheese of The herd brought near for David and for the people who were with him to eat, for they said the people are hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. And mustered David the people who were with him and set over them officers of thousands and officers of hundreds, and David sent the people one-third by the hand of Joab, and one-third by the hand of Abishai, the son of Zariah, the brother of Joab, and one-third by the hand of Ittai, the Gittite, and said the king to the people, Surely I will go out also, I with you, but said the people, not you shall go out, for if indeed we flee not, they shall set on us their heart, and if die half of us not, they shall set on us their heart, for now like us ten thousand, and now it is better that you be for us from the city to help, and said to them, The king, that which is good in your eyes, I will do instead a king at the side of the gate, and all the people went out by hundreds and by thousands, and commanded the king Joab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man, with Absalom, and all the people heard when commanded the king, all the officers concerning Absalom and went the people into the field to meet Israel and was the battle in the forest of Ephraim and were smitten there the people of Israel before the servants of David and there there was a destruction great on that day 
twenty thousand, and was there the battle spread over the face of all the land, and greatly the forest devoured among the people more than had devoured the sword in that day. And happened to come Absalom before the servants of David, and Absalom was riding on the mule, and came in the mule under the thick branches of the oak grate, and caught hold his head of the oak, and he was lifted between the heaven and the earth, and the mule that was under him passed on, and a man saw, and a certain man saw, and told Joab, and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hanging in the oak, and Joab said to the man who told him, And behold, you have seen, and why not did you strike him there to the earth, and call on me to give you ten silver pieces, and girdle one, and said the man to Joab, Yea, though I weighed on my hand, hand a thousand silver pieces now I would put forth my hand to the son of the king for in our ears commanded the king you and Abishai and Ittai saying take heed you who go against the youth against Absalom or I would have dealt against my soul falsely, for spy matter not is hidden from the king, and you have set you would yourself against me, and said, Joab, not thus I will wait before you. And he took three darts in his hand, and thrust them into the heart of Absalom, while he was alive in the heart of the oak and surrounded ten young men hearing weapons Joab's and they struck Absalom and killed him and blew Joab the ram's horn and returned the people from pursuing after Israel for had restrained Joab the people and they took Absalom and cast him in the forest into the pit great and set up over him a heap of stones very great great very and all Israel fled each one to his tent and Absalom had taken and set up for himself during his lifetime a standing pillar which is in the valley kings he said is not to me a son for the sake of remembering my name and he called the standing pillar by his name and he called to it monument Absalom's to this day and Ahimaaz the son of Zadok said let me run, let me run now and I will bear news to the king for has vindicated him Jehovah from the hand of his enemies and said to him Joab not a man of news you are this day but you shall bear news on another day but this day not you shall bear news because the king's son is dead and said Joab to Cushi go tell the king that which you have seen and bowed himself Cushy to Joab and ran and again yet Ahimaaz the son of Zadok said to Joab maybe whatever let me run please also I after the Cushite and said Joab why this that you should run my son for when you there is no news found, and maybe whatever, let me run, and he said to him, run, and ran. Ahimaaz the way of the circuit, and passed by the Cushite.
And David was sitting between two the gates and went the watchman to the roof of the gate to the wall and lifted up his eyes and looked and behold a man running by himself and called the watchman and told it to the king and said the king if by himself tidings are in his mouth and he coming came on and drawing near and saw the watchman man another running and called the watchman to the gatekeeper and said behold a man running by himself and said the king also this one is bearing tidings and said the watchman I see the running of the first as the running of Ahima as the son of Zadok and said the king amen good this is and with Good news he comes and called a high may as and said to the king peace and he bowed himself to the king on his face to the earth and said blessed be Jehovah your God who has shut up the men who lifted up their hand against my lord the king and said the king peace to the young man to Absalom and said may as I saw the tumult great when sent the servant kings Joab even your servant the king's servant Joab even your servant but not I do know what and said the king Turn aside, stand here, and he turned aside and stood. And behold, the Cushite had come and said, The Cushite, Good news, my lord, O king, for has vindicated you, Jehovah, today out of all the hand of those rising up against you. And said the king to the Cushite, Peace to the young man to Absalom, and said, the Cushite, let them be as the young men, the enemies of my lord the king, and all who have risen up against you for evil. And trembled the king, and went up to the upper room of the gate, and wept. And thus he said, as he went, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, O oh, that had died I instead of you O Absalom my son my son and it was told to Joab behold the king is weeping and mourn over Absalom and became the deliverance on day that morning to all the people for had heard the people on that day saying is grieved the king for his son and went by stealth the people on that day to enter the city as steal away the people who are ashamed as they flee in battle. And the king had covered his face and cried the king with a voice loud, My son Absalom, Absalom, my son, my son. And came to Joab the king to the house and said you have shamed today the faces of your servants those delivering your life today and the life of your sons and your daughters and the life of your wives and the life of your concubines to love your haters and to hate those who love you for you have declared today that there is not to you officers nor servants for I know today that if Absalom were alive and all of us today were dead, that then it would be right in your eyes. And now rise up, go out, and speak to the heart of your servants. For by Jehovah I have sworn that if you do, if you not do go out, not shall stay. Amen. With a, amen. With you tonight, and were evil for you this then evil all that he then all the evil that has come upon you from your youth until now and rose up the king and sat in the gate and to all the people 
they told it be they told it saying behold the king is sitting in the gate and came in all the people before the king and israel had fled each one to his tents and it was all the peoples were quarreling in all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king delivered us out of the hand of our enemies, and he saved us out of the hand of the Philistines. And now he has fled out of the land because of Absalom, and Absalom, whom we appoint, anointed, over us is dead in battle. And now why are you silent as to bringing back the king? And King David sent to Zadok and Abiathar the priests, saying, Speak to the elders of Judah, saying, Why are you the last to bring back the king to his house? For the word of all Israel has come to the king to his house. Your brothers, you are my bone and my flesh. You are, and why are you the last to bring back the king and to M. Asa say, Are not my bone and my flesh you thus shall do to me, God, and thus more also, if not commander of the army you are before me all the days instead of Joab, and he inclined the heart of every man of Judah as one man and they sent to the king return you and all your servants and returned to the king and came to the jordan and judah had come to gil gay gilgai to go to meet the king to over the king the jordan and hasten shimai the son of Jera a Benjamite who was from Behurim and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David and a thousand men were with him from Benjamin and Ziba the man of the house of Saul and fifteen his sons and twenty his servants with him and they rushed to the Jordan before the king and had crossed over the ford to carry over the household of the king and to do the good in his eyes. And Shemai, the son of Jera, had fallen before the king as he crossed the Jordan and said to the king, Not do that reckon to me, my lord, iniquity, nor shall you remember that which perversely did your servant in that day that went out my lord the king from Jerusalem for to lay it the king to his heart for knows your servant that I have sinned and behold I have come today the first of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet my lord the king and answered Abishai the son of Zariah and said for this not shall be executed Shemai, because he cursed the anointed of Jehovah. And said, David, what to me and to you, O sons of Zariah, that you are to me today an adversary? Today shall be executed any man in Israel, for not I do know that today I am king over Israel. And said the king to Shemai, You not shall die, and swore to him the king, and may Hai Bosheth, the son of Saul. Had come down to meet the king, and not he had a and not he had prepared his feet, and not he had done his mustache and his garments, not he had washed, and from even from the day went away the king till the day that he came in peace, and it was when he came to Jerusalem to meet the king that said to him, The king, why not did you go with 
Mep Hai Bosheth, and he said, My lord, O king, my young man deceived me, for said your servant, I will saddle for myself the ass and ride on it and go with the king. For is lame your servant, and he slandered your servant to my lord the king. And my lord the king is like an angel of God, yet do the good in your eyes, for not would be all the house of my father except men of death before my lord the king. And you have set your servant among those eating at your table. And what is there to me any more right even to cry any more to the king? And, and the king to any more to the king and said to him the king why do you speak any more of your affairs i have said you and ziba shall divide the land and said mephi bosheth to the king even the whole that him take since has come my lord the king in peace to his house and barzillai the giladite had gone from had gone down from Ragilim and crossed with the king the Jordan to send him away over the Jordan and Barzillai was old very a son of eighty years and he sustained the king as he abode as he abode in Mahinim for a man great he was very, and said the king to Barzillai, You cross over with me, and I will sustain you with me in Jerusalem. You cross over with me, and I will sustain you with me in Jerusalem. And said Barzillai the king, and said to, ba and said Barzillai to the king, As what? Are the days of the years of my life that I should go up with the king to Jerusalem? A son of eighty years I am today. Can I distinguish between good and evil? Can taste your servant that which I am eating and that which I drink? Or can I listen any more to the voice of singing men and singing women? And why should be your servant any more a burden to my lord the king? As a little thing cross over shall cross over your servant the Jordan with the king. And why should repay me the king with reward this? Let me return please your servant and I shall die in my city near the grave of my father and my mother. And behold your servant Chimhem let him go over with my lord the king and you do to him that which is good in your eyes and said the king with me shall pass over to him and i shall do to him the good in your eyes yea all that which you choose of me i will do for you and crossed all the people of the jordan and the king crossed and kissed the king barzillai and blessed him and he returned to his place and crossed the king to Gilgai and Chimham crossed with him and all the people of Judah and they brought over the king and also half of the people of Israel and behold all the men of Israel were coming the king and they said to the king why have still in you our brothers the men of Judah for they brought over the king and his household the Jordan and all the men of David with him and answered all the men of Judah against the men of Israel because it's near the king to us and why is this that it is angry to you about this matter at all have we eaten from the king or a gift lift up to us and answered the men of Israel the men of Judah and said ten hands to me in the king and also in David 
I have more right than you? Why then did you despise me and not was it my word first to me to bring back my king? And was harsher the word of the men of Judah more than the word of the men of Israel? And there happened to be a man of worthlessness, and his name was Sheba, the son of Bishri, a man of Benjamin. And he blew the ram's horn and said, Is not for us a portion in David, and no inheritance for us in the son of Jesse, each man to his tents, O Israel, and went up every man of Israel from following David, going after Sheba, the son of Bishri, but the men of Judah clung to their king from the Jordan even to Jerusalem, and came David into his house at Jerusalem, and took the king ten, the women, the concubines whom he had left to keep the house and put them in a house guarded, and sustained them, but to them not he did go in, and they were shut up to the house of their death and widowhood, living, and said the king to Am Asa, Call for me the men of Judah within three days, and you here stand. And went Am Asa to call Judah, but beyond delayed the set time which he had set him, and said David to Abishai, Now will do evil to us, Sheba the son of Bishri, more than Absalom. You take the servants of your Lord and pursue after him, lest he he find for himself cities fortified and save himself from our eye and went out after him the men of Joab and the Cherethites and the Palethites and all the mighty men and they went out from Jerusalem to pursue after Sheba the son of Bishri. They were near the stone grate that was in Gibeon and and Mesa had gone before them, and Joab was girded his war coat, his clothing, and over it a belt with a sword fastened on his loins in its sheath. And as he went out, it fell on, it fell out, and said Joab to Am Mesa, "Is it well with you, my brother?" And took the right hand of Joab of the beard of Amasa to give a kiss to him, and Amasa not was on guard against the sword that was in the hand of Joab, and he struck him with it to the belly and poured out to the ground, not did strike again him, and he died, and Joab and Abishai his brother pursued after Sheba the son of Bishri, and a man stood beside him of the young men of Joab. And he said, Whoever delights in Joab, and whoever is for David, follow after Joab. And Damaso was wallowing in blood in the middle of the highway, and saw the man that stood still all the people, and he turned Amasa from the highway to the field and threw over him a garment when he saw all who came beside him stood still when he was taken from the highway passed on every man after Joab to pursue after Sheba the son of Bishri and went through all the tribes of Israel to Abel even to Beth Maacah and all the Berites, and they were gathered, and go in also after him. And they came and lay siege against him, 
in a Bobeth Mayaka and poured out a siege mount against the city and it stood against the wall and all the people who were with Joab were undermining to cause to fall the wall then called a woman wise from the city here here say please to Joab come near to here that I may speak to you and he came near to her and said the woman are you Joab and he said I am and she said to him hear the words of your handmaid and he said I am listening and she spoke saying often they spoke formally saying surely they will ask at Abel and so they in did the dispute I am of the peaceful faithful ones of Israel you are seeking to destroy a city and a mother in Israel why will you swallow the inheritance of Jehovah and answered Joab and said far be it far be it from me if I swallow or if I destroy not such is the case for a man of the hill country of Ephraim Sheba the son of Bishri is his name he has lifted his hand against the king against David give him by himself then I will go away from the city and said the woman to Joab behold his head will be thrown to you over the wall and came the woman to all the people but and came the woman to all the people in her wisdom and they cut off the head of Sheba the son of Bishri and threw it to Joab and he blew the ram's horn and they were dispersed from the city each man to his tents and Joab went back to Jerusalem to the king and Joab was over all the army of Israel and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada over the Cherethites and over the Palathites and Adorim over the forced labor and Jehoshaphat the son of Elhilud Ahilud the recorder and Sheba was scribe and Zadok and Abiathar the priests and also Ira the Jairite was a priest the Jairite was a priest to David and was a famine in the days of David three years chapter 21 year after year and sought David the face of Jehovah and said Jehovah it is for Saul and for his house of bloodshed because he put to death the Gibeonites and he called the king for the Gibeonites and said to them as to the Gibeonites not of the sons of Israel were they but of the remnant of the Amorites and the sons of Israel had sworn to them and sought Saul to strike them in his zeal for the sons of Israel and Judah and said David to the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you, and with what shall I atone that you bless the inheritance of Jehovah? And said to him, The Gibeonites, not for us silver nor gold with Saul and with his house, and not for us a man to put to death in Israel. And he said, What you say I will do for you. And they said to the king, The man who destroyed us and who schemed against that we be wasted from standing in all the border of Israel let be given to us seven men of his sons and we shall expose them to Jehovah and Gibeah of Saul the chosen of Jehovah and said the king I will give but spared the king Mep 
Ahai Bosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the oath of Jehovah that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul, and took the king to the sons of Rizpah, the daughter of Aya, whom she bore to Saul, Armoni and Mephi Bosheth, and five the sons of Michelle, the daughter of Saul, whom she bore to Adriel, the son of Barzillai, the Meholathite, and gave them into the hand of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them in the mountain before Jehovah. And followed the seven together, and they were executed in the days of harvest, in the first days, in the beginning of harvest barley, and took Rizpah, the daughter of Aya, sackcloth, and spread it for herself on the rock from the beginning of harvest until dropped water on them out of the heavens. And not did allow a bird of the heavens to rest on them by day, nor the beast of the field by night. And it was told to David that which had Rizpah, the daughter of Aya, the concubine of Saul, and went, do and went David and took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan his son from the men of Jabesh Gilead, who had stolen them from the plaza of Bethshan. Where hanged them there the Philistines in the days, struck the Philistines Saul and Gibboa. And he brought up from there the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan his son, and they gathered up the bones of those hanged and buried the bones of Saul and Jonathan his son in the land of Benjamin. And Zela in the grave of Kish his father, and did all that commanded the king and heard prayer God for the land afterwards and was again war for the Philistines with Israel And went down David and his servants with him. And they fought with the Philistines and was weary David and Ishbenob, who was the sons of the sons of Rapha, the weight of his spear being three hundred shekels weight of bronze, and he was with girt a new sword, and he said to strike David, and helped him. Abishai the son of Zariah, and struck the Philistine, and killed him. Then swore the men of David to him, saying, Not you shall go out again with us to battle, that not you may put out the lamp of Israel. And it was after this that was again the war in Gob with the Philistines, then struck Sibichai the Hushathite, Seth, who was among the sons of the giant, and was again the war in Gob with the Philistines, and struck Elthanan, the son of Jerob, Oregim, the Bethlehem, Hemite, Goliath, the Gittite, and the wood of his spear was like the weaver's beam, and was again the war in Gath, and was a man of stature, and the fingers of his hands, and the fingers of his feet were six, and six twenty four in number and also he had been born to the giant and he taunted Israel and struck him Jonathan the son of Shemaiah 
brother David's. For these were these four were born to the giant in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David, by the hand of his servants. And David spoke to Jehovah the words of the song, This in the day delivered Jehovah him out of the hand of all his enemies, and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, Jehovah is my rock and my fortress, and a deliverer to me, God of my rock, I take refuge in him, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high, my high tower and my refuge, my savior from violence, you do save me, the one to be praised. I call on Jehovah, and from my enemies I am saved. When surround me the waves of death, the torrents of wickedness overwhelm me, the cords of Sheol are round about me, confront me the snares of death. In my distress I call on Jehovah, and to my God I called. And he heard from his temple my voice, and my cry for help was in his ears, and shook and quaked the earth. The foundations of the heavens were trembling and were shaken, for there was anger to him rose up smoke in his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured coals were kindled by it and he bowed the heavens and came down and thick darkness was under his feet And he rode on a cherub and did fly, and was seen on the wings of the wind, and he made darkness round about him, his pavilions. the gatherings of waters, thick clouds of the skies. From the brightness before him were kindled coals of fire, thundered from the heavens Jehovah, and the Most High gave forth his voice, and he sent forth arrows and scattered them lightning and confused them and appeared the channels of the sea were uncovered the foundations of the world by the rebuke of Jehovah from the blast of the breath of his nostrils He sent from the height, he took me, he drew me out of waters many. He delivered me from my enemy strong. From those who hated me, for they were stronger than me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity. But was Jehovah a support to me? And he brought out to a broad place me. He delivered for me. He delighted in me. Treated me, Jehovah, according to my righteousness. 
according to the cleanness of my hands he has repaid me for I have kept the ways of Jehovah and not have acted wickedly against my God for all his judgments were before me as to his statutes not I do turn away from them and I was blameless before him and I kept myself from my iniquity and repaid Jehovah to me according to my righteousness according to my cleanness before his eyes with the kind you show yourself kind with the man blameless you show yourself blameless with the pure you show yourself pure and with the perverted you show yourself twisted And the afflicted people you do save. And your eyes are on the haughty whom you abase. For you are my lamp, O Jehovah. And Jehovah shall illumine my darkness. For by you I run through a troop. By my God, I leap over a wall. As for God, blameless is his way. The word of Jehovah is tried. A shield is he to all those who seek refuge in him. For who is God except Jehovah? And who is a rock except our God? God is my fortress strong. And he sets free the blameless in his way. making my feet like hinds feet and on my high places causing me to stand teaching my hands for battle so that may bend a bow of bronze my arms and you have given to me the shield of your salvation and your lowliness has made me great. You do enlarge my steps under me, and not have stepped my ankles, and not have slipped my ankles. I pursued my enemies and destroyed them. And not I did turn back until they were consumed. And I consumed them and smote them, and not they did rise, but fell under my feet, and you girded me with strength for battle. You caused to bow my foes under me and my enemies you gave to me the neck those hating me I silenced they looked and none was to save 
to Jehovah and not he did answer them and I beat them as the dust of the earth is the mire of the streets I crushed them and I stamped them and you delivered me from the quarrels of my people you kept me as the head of the nations a people not I have known served me the sons of strangers feigned submission to me when hears the ear they listen to me the sons of the stranger wither and come trembling from their dungeons Jehovah lives lives Jehovah and blessed be my rock and is exalted the God of the rock of my salvation the God who gives vengeance for me and bringing down peoples under me and brings me forth from my enemies yea above my foes you raise me up from the man of violence you deliver me therefore I confess you Jehovah among the nations and to your name I will sing praise therefore I confess you Jehovah among nations and your name I will sing praise to a tower of salvation he is to his king and doing mercy to his anointed to David and to his seed till forever and these are the words of David last the saying of David the son of Jesse and the saying of the man raised on high the anointed of the God of Jacob and the pleasant psalmist of Israel the spirit of Jehovah has spoken by me and his word is on my tongue spoke the God of Israel to me he said the rock of Israel he that rules over man righteously who rules in the fear of God is as the light of the morning shines the sun a morning no with clouds a morning with no clouds through shining after rain the tender grass from the earth for is not so my house with God for a covenant everlasting he has made with me ordered in all things and sure for all my salvation and all my desire for not will make he it grow but the wicked as a thorn shall be cast out of all them for not by the hand they can be taken but the man who shall touch them must be armed with iron and the shaft of a spear and with fire utterly they shall be burned in their place these are the names of the mighty ones who were to David, Josheb, Bathshebeth, the Tajmanite, the Tajmanite, chief of the three he was called Adeno the Isnite, because of 800 killed at one time, and after him was Eleazar the son of Dado, the son of Ahohai, 
of the three mighty men with David when they taunted the Philistines who were gathered there to battle and went up the men of Israel and he arose and struck the Philistines until was weary his hand and clung his hand to the sword and worked Jehovah a salvation great on that day and the people went back after him only to plunder and after him was Shema the son of Agi the Herorite and were gathered the Philistines into a troop and there was a plot of the field full of lentils and the people fled before the Philistines and he set himself in the midst of the plot and saved it and struck the Philistines and worked Jehovah a salvation great and worked Jehovah a salvation great and went down three of the thirty head men and came to the harvest to David to the cave of Adullam and the troop of the Philistines was camping in the valley of the giants and David was then in the stronghold and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem and craved David and said who shall give me drink water from the well of Bethlehem which is by the gate and brought through thee the mighty ones of the camp the Philistines and drew out of the camp of the Philistines and drew out water from the well of Bethlehem which is by the gate and took it up and brought to David but not he was willing to drink it and poured out it to Jehovah and said far be it from me O Jehovah that I should do this is it not the blood of the men who went with their lives and not he was willing to drink it these things did three did the three mighty ones and Abishai the brother of Joab the son of Zariah he was the head of the three and he brandished his spear against three hundred killed them and to him a name among the three more than the three surely he was honored and he was to them for a commander but to the first three not he did come and but Naya the son of Jehada a son of a man mighty great in deeds from Kabzeel he struck two like lion men of Moab and he went down and struck a lion in the middle of a pit in a day of snow and he struck a man Egyptian a man of form and in the hand of the Egyptian was a spear and he went down to him with a staff and he snatched the spear out of the hand of the Egyptian and killed him with his own spear these things did Benaiah the son of Jehoiada and to him a name among three the mighty ones more than the thirty he was anoint he was honored but to the three not he did come and set him David over his guard Asa Asahel the brother of Joab was of the thirty Al Hanan the son of Dodo of Bethlehem Shama the Herodite Elika the Herodite Hilas the Palite the Pal the Paltite Ara the son of Ikish the Tekoite Abiezer the Anathothite, Mebunai the Hushathite, Zalman the Ahohite, Mahari the Natophathite, Caleb the son of Bena a Natophathite, Ittai the son of Rabbi out of Gibeah of the sons of Benjamin, Beniah the Parathite, Thonite Hidai of the brooks of Gaash of Gaash 
Abbey Alban the Arabathite Asmaveth the Barhumite Elie the Shealbanite of the sons of Jason Jonathan Shema the Herarite Ehiam the son of Sherar the Herarite Eli Phelet the son of Ahaj Ahaz by the son of Maashathite Eliam the son of Ahithoph by the Gilanite Hezrai the Carmelite Paarai the Arbite Agai the son of Nathan of Zoba Bani the Gedai Zelak the Ammonite Naharai the Beerothite Armor bearer of Joab the son of Zariah Ira and Ithra Hite Garib the Garib and Ithrite Uriah the Hittite in all thirty and seven And again the anger of Jehovah burned against Israel and moved David against them to say, Go number Israel and Judah, and said the king to Joab, the commander of the army that was with him, Go about now through all the tribes of Israel from Dan even to Beersheba, and number the people many the people may that I know the number of the people. And said Joab to the king and May add Jehovah your God to the people like them and like them a hundred times. Well, eyes, my lord, the king's see, but my lord, the king, why does delight in this thing, but prevail the word of the king against Joab and against the officers of the army and went out Joab and the officers of the army from before the king to muster the people, even Israel. And they crossed the Jordan and camped in Aurora on the right of the city that is in the middle of the valley of Gad and to Jazer. And they came into Gilead and the land of Tatim had the she and they came to Dan Gian and around to Sidon. And they came into the fortress of Tyre and all the cities of the Hivite and of the Canaanite and went out to the south of Judah to Beersheba when they had gone into all the land and came at the end of nine months and twenty days to Jerusalem and gave Joab the count of the mustering of the people to the king. And was Israel eight hundred thousand mighty men drawing sword? And the men of Judah five hundred thousand men and struck the heart of David him after he had numbered the people and said David to Jehovah, I have sinned greatly in that which I have done, and now, O Jehovah, take away, I pray, the iniquity of your servant, for I have acted foolishly very. And arose David in the morning, and the word of Jehovah came to Gad the prophet, the seer of David, saying, Go, and you shall speak to David. Thus says Jehovah, Three things I am imposing upon you, choose for yourself one of them. And I will do it to you. And came Gad to David and told him and said to him, Shall come to you seven years of famine in your land, or three months shall you flee before your adversaries while he pursues you, or shall there be three days plague in your land? Now consider and see what I shall take back to him. Him who sent me word and said, David to Gad, distress to me, great distress. Let us fall now into the hand of Jehovah, for many are his mercies, and into the hand of man not let me fall. And gave Jehovah a plague upon Israel from the morning even to the 
time appointed and died of the people from Dan even to Beersheba seventy thousand men and put forth his hand the angel to Jerusalem to destroy it and repented Jehovah as to the evil and said to the angel who was destroying among the people enough now stop your hand and the angel of Jehovah was near the floor of Aranua Ara Una, the Jebusite, and spoke David to Jehovah when he saw the angel who was striking among the people and said, Behold, I have sinned, yea, I have acted perversely in these the flock. What have they done? Let be your hand upon me and on the house of my father. And came to David on that day and said to him, Go up, raise to Jehovah an altar in the threshing floor of Arauna the Jebusite, and went up David according to the word of Gad as commanded Jehovah, and looked down Arauna and saw the king and his servants crossing over to him, and went out Arauna and bowed to the king his face to the earth, and said, Arauna, why has come my lord the king to his servant? And said, David, to buy from you the threshing floor to build an altar to Jehovah. That may be stayed the plague from the people, and said Arauna to David, let take and offer up my lord the king that which is good in his eyes see the oxen for the burnt offering and the threshing sledges and the yokes of the oxen for wood all these gives Arauna o king to the king and said Arauna to the king Jehovah your God may accept you and said the king to Arauna, No, for surely I will buy from you for a price, and not I shall offer to Jehovah my God burnt offerings for nothing. And bought David the threshing floor and the oxen with silver fifty shekels, shekels fifty, and built there David an altar to Jehovah and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and was entreated Jehovah for the land and was stayed the plague from Israel.